Today we are looking at a CD player and integrated amplifier combination from one of the most well-respected hi-fi companies of all time, Marantz. And I've been playing with samples of the Model 30 integrated amplifier and SACD30N CD player slash SACD player for about the last three weeks. And also in this video, we're gonna put them up against similarly priced rivals from another manufacturer. This episode is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the mythical series Analog Interconnects. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, the Model 30 from Marantz is a Class D amplifier that offers a load invariant 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 200 watts per channel into 4 ohms. And if we look at the notes on the Model 30, we see that Marantz is making a big deal about it having separate pre-amplifier and power amplifier sections. And it also features extensive use of Marantz's HDAM or HDAM modules, which favor discrete components over op amps. Now the Model 30 is an all analog amplifier, so there's no DAC, no streamer inside. To add that functionality, we have to bring in the SACD30N, which plays CDs, of which I own many. And it also plays SACDs, of which I own absolutely none. Is he? Serious? And the SACD30N also features Marantz's in-house designed and built CD tray mechanism. And the N in the product name indicates network, which means we can stream over Wi-Fi and we can stream over Ethernet. And that streaming takes in Apple AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, and HEOS. And HEOS also allows us to play back gaplessly files from a USB storage device inserted into the back panel. Moreover, we can also access the SACD30N's internal MMM DAC from four different digital inputs on the back. So we've got two Toslink, one coax, and one USB. And if you're wondering what MMM is, it stands for Marantz Music Mastering. And that's where all incoming signals are upscaled to DSD and then decoded using a circuit that does not involve any single off-the-shelf DAC chip. One minor aesthetic grumble, it's a pity that Marantz and a company of its size and with its resources could not internalize the Wi-Fi aerials basically inside the SACD30N, as many other manufacturers have done. I'm thinking of Name, and I'm also thinking of Lingdorf, because we're gonna use Lingdorf's TDAI 3400 streaming integrated amplifier and the matching CD2 CD player as a comparator in this video to go deep into side-by-side -side comparison territory. And the Lingdorf does internalize those Wi-Fi aerials. But you should know that I'll be publishing a separate video about the Lingdorf components as well. So with the two Marantz units hooked up to a pair of Bowers & Wilkins 703 S3, I hear the Marantz combo as not quite as detailed as the Lingdorf combo. It means that the the layers don't separate quite so cleanly. But what the Marantz gives us in return is a fuller, more rounded take on a CD like the Best of Luna, which really sort of pumps the tires or fattens up the sound of Britta Phillips's bass lines. But these differences, as always, are audiophile differences. They are this and not this. And these audible differences are also mirrored in the headphone outputs of each combo. So the Lingdorf amplifier and the Marantz amplifier. In that, we get a little bit more magnesium burn up top 
from the Lingdorf combo. So essentially from the Lingdorf three and a half mil socket. And if we cut over then to the Marantz's 6.4 millimeter socket, again, everything just sounds just a little bit fuller, a little bit plumper, and I would say richer and warmer, but I know I say that quite a lot about a lot of things, but it definitely is the case with this AB comparison, this side-by-side -side AB comparison, because obviously I have both pairs of units right here, right now. Oh, well, the other difference between the Marantz pairing and the Lingdorf pairing in terms of headphone listening is that the Marantz sounds a little bit less sort of in your head. It puts a head stage a little bit further forward than does the Lingdorf. And if you wanna know about the headphone output on the Marantz SACD30N, I wish I could tell you, because when I tested it with my review sample, the left channel didn't work. Don't know why, I think it must have got damaged in transit. And I guess it'll come as no surprise really that when we compare just the CD players and their analog outputs, we note that basically the Marantz, the SACD30N, gives us a slightly warmer, slightly fuller, slightly richer presentation than the Lingdorf CD2, because obviously I routed them both into the same amplifier. I actually did it with both the Marantz amplifier and the Lingdorf amplifier and got the same result. It's just that the, the Lingdorf is a bit, a bit leaner and a bit keener and the Marantz is, yeah, it, it's fleshier and, and fuller, but again, audio file differences. So if you wanted to know which of the two disc spinners was the more organic sounding, I would say the Marantz SACD30N. I think its defining quality, a bit like the amplifier, the Model 30, is tonal richness. So on a system level, if we bring them back both together, both CD player and amplifier, both pairings, and try them out with different speakers as I have, I tried them with the Zusol 6 and obviously the B&W 703 S3. I think that the Marantz pairing is a good match for the Zusol 6, but an absolutely outstanding match for the Bowers and Wilkins loudspeakers. And that's especially true of brighter recordings like the Softboy's Next Doorland. Because the tweeter on the Bowers and Wilkins speakers can be, it's a little bit insistent sometimes and the Marantz just stops it from straying or tipping over into what we might call brightness. So we absolutely do not need to reach for the tone controls on the Model 30 amplifier when playing something like Daft Punk's homework. We don't need any more bass, we don't need to dial it back, and we definitely don't need to adjust the treble. It's like everything is in its right place. Notice that so far in describing the audible differences between the Lingdorf combo and the Marantz combo and also them as separate components, I've used words like slightly and marginally and talked about audiophile differences being this wide. But I think the bigger differences between these two sets of components lies with functionality and aesthetics and other qualities that basically aren't sound. For example, streaming, because it's the SACD30N that gives us the streaming functionality here and not the amplifier itself. The Model 30 is an all analog affair and it features a very, very, very good sounding phono stage. And it's a clear step up from the internal phono stage that sits inside the Cambridge Audio Alba TT2. I get a much, I think, bigger sound from that turntable using the phono stage inside the Marantz amp than I do using the phono stage inside the turntable. And I'll go further than that and I'll say that the sound of the phono stage inside the Model 30 has a punchier low end and better extended treble than the phono stage inside the Cambridge Audio turntable. But obviously I don't know how this phono stage inside the Marantz amplifier compares to any other phono stage because I don't have any other phono stages here. However, if we come back to streaming, even though the SACD30N's combination of Spotify Connect 
Apple AirPlay 2. And HEOS is a good starter kit for somebody coming over from CDs to streaming or is not really well versed in the streaming universe. I think the Lingdorf TDAI 3400 absolutely aces it in terms of streaming functionality because we get Spotify Connect, Apple AirPlay 2, but we also get Tidal Connect and Rune Readiness. And the HEOS app that ships with the SACD30N, as I've used it in the past and I've used it again this time, it's basic with a capital B and its interface isn't as good or isn't as polished or isn't as easy to use as the apps that come with your preferred streaming service. It needs work, I'm sorry, HEOS needs work still. And then there's HDMI ARC, which is an additional module for the Lingdorf amplifier, but doesn't feature on either of the Marantz units. So what I had to do is I had to pull out the Blue Sound node and then use that as a DDC. So basically HDMI ARC into it and then spit off out of it into the Marantz CD player. Shall we talk about knob feel? Because I think the Marantz is, I guess, firmer to turn knobs feel a little bit more satisfying than the more freewheeling nature of the, the Lingdorf knobs and buttons, although there are far fewer on the Lingdorf units than on the Marantz. So I guess if you enjoy turning rotaries, the Marantz is probably gonna be the preferred option for you. And also, if you're somebody who likes to feel the weight of components when you unbox them and put them onto your sideboard or into your hi-fi rack, then the Marantz is gonna be by far the more satisfying of the two stacks here because both the SACD30N and the Model 30 amplifier, these are heavy units, they feel substantial. They are exceptionally well made. You really feel like you're getting thousands of dollars worth of gear. However, and I know Marantz have done this in their promo shots, I don't think that the SACD30N stacks as tidily on top of the Model 30 amplifier, especially on a low board, as it sits, well, it just sits better in a rack. It looks a bit kind of ungainly sat on my Kallax rack. It's just too high. It looks very imposing and because the CD2 from Lingdorf is a low profile player, I don't feel that way about the Lingdorf pairing. So for me, I think the Marantz units, they need a hi-fi rack and each one on its own shelf. But that's a personal thing. And I mentioned a hi-fi rack because I think that it points to who the Marantz SACD player and integrated amplifier are really for because I think this is for more of a an old school hi-fi enthusiast. Somebody who's probably still more into physical formats because the phono stage is really good and obviously the SACD CD player is excellent and both of them have that sort of warm, full, rich sound. And it's almost as if the streaming is, it's there and it's there if you want it, but it isn't the last word in the breadth of functionality that we get from other players, or rather other amplifiers, streaming amplifiers like the Lingdorf. So I think the Marantz pairing has one foot in the future, but still one foot firmly in the past. So I think of the two stacks that I've considered in this video, the Lingdorf and the Marantz, I think the Marantz is much better suited for somebody who enjoys the playback ceremony, you know, like taking the CD out of the case, opening the drawer and putting the CD in the drawer, closing the drawer, pushing play or the playback ceremony of vinyl. Although I have to make mention of this, that sometimes the Marantz CD drawer takes an age to open. I don't know why. Sometimes it's pretty quick, other times not. Whereas the Lingdorf CD drawer is zippy every time. But, and I really don't know how Marantz have done this, but I hear the Model 30 sound as closer to a class AB amplifiers, rounder, fuller, richer presentation than any class D amp that I've hitherto heard or hitherto reviewed. It really is exceptional what Marantz have done here in just making it sound like it's basically not that sort of squeegee clean amplifier sound that I tend to expect from class D amplifiers. And yeah, it's closer to a class AB amplifier in the main. And that alone, I think, is reason enough to investigate further or book an audition. So yeah, if you've got loudspeakers with a fairly present tweeter or a fairly present top end sound, 
then I think the SACD30N and the Model 30 are gonna be right up your street because they're not gonna tip it over into brightness and they're gonna make sure everything sounds just a bit lusher and a bit more pleasing. And I guess, and I hate to say this word, and this word does not come from me, I hate this word, you know I hate this word, but really I think these Marantz devices are for somebody who likes to describe their hi-fi as, oh God, musical. Anyway, the M word aside, if you like this video, please consider giving it a like below. If you like my attitude towards high-end audio reviews in that side-by-side -side comparisons are fundamental to what I do, that means having gear here at the same time to compare it at the same time in real time. So if you dig that, please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Hello, me again. You're watching this video right now on YouTube. But if you wanna see a version of this video that also features a music or album recommendation in the middle of the video and features bloopers right in this spot, then you need to go over to my Patreon where you can watch that exact video right now.